What's all that fifteen? You gonna go through the whole chapter of First Samuel seventeen? Yeah, I'm sure I will try. You know what I'm saying? Try to get through it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. To the apostles of Great Millstone and teaching rule well, peace and blessings unto the elect. All right, with Great Millstone Dallas Camp, man. It's another uh in class, man. Basically, what we're gonna go over is uh first Samuel chapter 17. Okay, we're gonna go over uh basically, you know, the David and Goliath story, man, because we're in the same, we're in a uh we're in a time where that same uh that same thing that played out in uh Acts, I mean it's like it. First Samuel 17 is about to be played out again in this time, man, because that it's a giant in the earth right now, you know what I'm saying? By the name of Esau Edom, man, who got everybody spooked. But it's gonna, it's gonna come a certain remnant that has that confidence or had, or had your, like had that confidence as David does, man. You know, but and this message needs to be pushed out. Let me say that too, man, because you got a lot of camps out there, man, who's basically saying, you know, scoffing at miracles. You know, you got a, a you know, which they call themselves one body in your house shop, but you niggas are, are one body in Christ, man, because that's, that's that's the name that you push, man. You see. You damn sure ain't no one body in your house shop, man. You know, Satan. Yeah, and you know, and this and this is the message that Jake needs to hear, man, because it's gonna take it's gonna take a miracle for us to get out of here, man. Right. You know, but here it is. You have these different camps, such as one body in your house shop. You have IUIC. You know, talking about where you you can get the chip and repent. These are all niggas that's trying to go up another way, man. You, you know, right. they, they trying to go up. It's like, what you say? They're not Hebrew. Yeah, yeah, they're not Hebrew no more. All this madness, man, trying to go up another way except the, the way that the Lord told us to go, which is the straight way, man. Going through that straight gate, man. You know? Because, uh, can you get that uh that scripture, bro? God, this is uh the book of Romans, chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Yeah, through comfort. Okay, we might have hope, man. So we can look back at all these examples, man, of our forefathers going through situations to where it looked like there was no way out, you know. And the Lord stepped in with a miracle, man, you know. And this, like I said earlier, it's gonna take it's gonna take a miracle for us to get out of this, man. We can't, we it's not, we can't get out of this in a carnal means, man. It has to be a, a, a divine intervention to get us out of this, man. Okay, but uh, can you get, you got that Maccabees? Well, got that Maccabees. I want to make that point because our forefathers always reverted back onto the scriptures. To build that confidence up, man. Okay, you got it. Done? It was uh, Second Maccabees chapter <clears throat> chapter three, verse fifteen. It says, "But the priests prostrating themselves before the altar in their priest vestments, called unto the heaven upon uh, upon him that made a law concerning things given to be kept, that they should be safely uh, that they should safely be preserved for such as had committed them to be kept. Mm -hmm. Then whoso looked to the high priest in the face, it would have wounded his heart." Uh, what? what? So like, where you at? First Maccabees, right? Oh, I'm a second. So oh, yeah, First Maccabees three. So I think first. Right, first Maccabees three and fifteen. All right. So she made him ready to go. Uh, first Maccabees three and fifteen. It's Judas Maccabees, okay, and Mattathias, the sons of Mattathias, man. To whom Judas answered, "It is no matter." Uh, it is no matter hard multitude. The purpose of our warfare are not carnal, man. You see? And when the story that we're gonna go to in uh first Samuel 17, man, David, this is gonna go into the story. When you read, David basically said that, man, the about second. <clears throat> but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. Going to what you and Azekah uh on each side of each other, man. Okay. And then we're gonna uh, and a man, you know and the weight of the coat was five thousand and the weight of the coat was five thousand It's like it rains like it rains. Be struggling and let him come down to that movie Troy. That's basically uh, 277. Excuse me, Hara. It says to reproach, to taunt, 
to blaspheme, mm -hmm. uh, defy, jeopardize, to rail, to a Revelation chapter 13, and um, I just said it right here in verse 6. And it says, and he opened his mouth and reputation, man, you know, and then his tongue is being pushed out all throughout the planet Earth, man. You know, he's boasting it. Like, there is no God. This and that, his, his, his philosophies, the Big Bang Theory, man. He's blaspheming against the, the Lord, man. You know, the heavens saying that the, the, the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son is, is a so-called white man. The angels are white, you know. Israel is white, you know. All that, man. He's blaspheming, saying that saying the angels are, 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 are aliens, a are little green man, you know. That's blaspheming, man. Okay, so let's yeah. go back. Can I say, that uh, devil, uh, Noah... You all know of Robert. That's another example. He made a couple of blasphemous statements. He said uh, that the Son of God was fake news. Mm. You know, you know, commit something, and then the Lord would get angry at us, and then a drought would come. He said, "Now that we have our own water, we can make it magic." No, no, sorry. No, I said like when you continue reading the story, you can see how proud uh, 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 the liar was, man. And he saw us boasting in that same pride. That's a proudful statement to say that if the Lord, the Lord can try to sense, like, well, we got out, we got technology. That, 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 you know what I'm saying? It can't affect not knowing that nigga. If the Lord don't want want that to uh, to work, it ain't gonna work, man. You see? The Lord right. gave you the technology. Exactly. That's right. And that's why it says in the book of Obadiah, "The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee." Yep. So they've even been deceived by their own form of pride that the Lord had given them. Yes, <clears throat> this is uh, Ezekiel 35 and verse 12, and this is concerning uh, Mount Seir. We read the second verse, it says, And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, mm -hmm. saying they are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. Thus with your mouth you have boasted against me, and have multiplied your words against me. I have, I have heard them. So, like you said, you know, Esau's moving in the same spirit as uh, Goliath was, right? That's right. We can get back to the story, bro. Gone, bro. This is back in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 11. And it reads, When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, so everybody was afraid of him, man. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can imagine, you know what I'm saying, there were some big dudes in the, in, in the army of Israel, man, you know? When you go and read about Saul, it says Saul uh, stood taller than all uh, all the rest, man. You see, so Saul wasn't just no little man either, man. You know, you go into David's brothers, man, because it's going to go on to uh, br to bring up David's brothers, man. They weren't no little dudes, man. These are uh, big dudes, man. You know, dudes that are warriors, man. And Goliath had them shook just like Esau has these different other camps shook up, man, to the point to where they don't even want to talk about Esau no more. They want to they want to divert it. Oh, well, you know, like Esau, you know. He, he, uh, we ain't talking to you. All you want to do is talk about the, the, the white man, the white man, man. What you supposed to, man? The Esau and Jacob in the end times, man. You supposed to talk about this, man. It says in Second Thessalonians that man of sin shall be revealed. You supposed to bring this up, man. Yeah. You know? I mean, Papa not spiritual. Ed. Okay. It's just not spiritual in today. They're not, they're not, not in the right place. When Joshua was, you know, when the Lord put the Spirit on Joshua to come and take over the land, it was a reoccurring phrase. They said, be, Only be thou strong and of a very good courage. That kept being said through the chapter, like Joshua 2. All right, and then when you go back, and um, let me read it real quick. It's uh, 1 Samuel 13. When the Lord chose, you know, uh, when he was saying, Saul, you're not going to be the ruler anymore. Listen to what he said in verse 14. I'm going to start at 13, though. It says, And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, and thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Verse 14. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. David, even though we don't have, because it's going through all these physical attributes of Goliath and all that. It's just saying, look look how big this man was. Da -da -da. But when it describes David, it don't talk about his physical attributes. It talks about his, his spirit, mm -hmm. his mind. And their spirit is off. So they're not fit for this battle. Right. They're not ready to be only thou strong and of a very good courage. Mm -hmm. All right? Let me finish this 14. But now, now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be a captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And it's being clear that they're not to be a cap. These other camps and these other, they're not to be leaders over Israel, man. Mm -hmm. They're not in the right spirit. That's right. Uh, real quick, go ahead. I got uh, in regards to uh, these, these groups afraid or don't want to talk about Esau, you're going against the Most High and you don't do it because he told Ezekiel and saying to it, Thus said the Lord of power, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. 
and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. So this is part of, again, part of the gospel of the kingdom, part of the prophecies that the Lord has going out into the earth. We're supposed to tell them that the Lord is against them, that he's going to destroy their civilization. He's going to bring them down. You see, and the reasons why. We're here to read the charges, you know, to, to bring forth. So when the Lord brings the punishment, as it says in Isaiah 34, uh, all, all nations, roughly paraphrasing, all nations are going to hear this testimony. They're going to hear about why the Lord is going to make them go into Armageddon, why it's going to make them go to World War III to fight, you know, why it's going to bring them down. They have to be notified, if, if, you know, for lack of a better word, they have to be told right, what the right. Lord is doing. Mm -hmm. That's right. You got it, brother. This is back in the book of, uh, so I can, book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, and I'm going to read verse 12. And it reads, Now David was the son of the Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. I'll read that again. So like, and he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. Mm -hmm. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and the next unto him, Abinadad, and the third, Shema. So, 40 days. Man, so for 40 days, Goliath came out every Talk day. Shit. Yeah, Talk boasting. Shit. Yeah, man. You know, proud as hell, man. Talking, talking, talking trash about the Lord, man. Verse uh, 14. And, da and David was the youngest, and the three elders followed Saul. But David went and returned. And let's jump down to verse 17. And Jesse said unto David, his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this. Mm -hmm. So basically, he told him to go. Take this food unto your brothers and see how they doing, man. Okay, see how they faring. Keep going, bro. You mind, you mind if I make a... Uh, Go ahead, bro. When his father's, you know... His ...with the Philistines, going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. Mm -hmm. So he was right. And ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. Yeah, as you can imagine. You know? Mindset and, and not even just that, but just full assurance that the Lord was with him. Mm -hmm. Well, some other stuff he did. Yeah. Cared. Mm -hmm. You see, one body, what they're doing is speaking doubt. They have the mindset of Saul. We can't beat this man unless we, you know, do sure, this or do sure. that. Yeah. And the people under them, they're taking on that same mindset, which leads to what? You, you lose. We've got to speak victory because it's written. Mm -hmm. Victory on the beast, the image, the mind. It's all written. Verse 7, composure. You like Elder Ariel goes into that term, FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, you know, to the Lord first. And David did that as well. <clears throat> you know? yep. Got a, a quick song. Uh, this is uh, Psalm 124, verse 1. It says, it have, If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, If it had not been for the Lord, the stream had gone over our soul, then the proud waters, which represent the people, had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. went to that in um, Psalms 91, I believe. It talks about the fowler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The king of the Lord who made heaven That's and it. earth. <laughs> That's it. And so, like the hell was saying, we got to speak life. You know, it's already recorded. You know, a, a great multitude gets delivered. Right. That's right. Who were they? Are they saying, well, we don't know. We might, you know, we might not make it? No. There's a great multitude that's going to be delivered. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, why not? Why not us? Like, you know, yeah. Russell, why not us? You yeah. know, mm -hmm. it's yeah. in the boldness. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Got right. a precept too. I made mean, a quick point, man. It said that about their name, man. We don't even have the names, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Right. That uh, H O I dude said it's just like that. Remember themselves and think upon my name. That's right. That's, that's right. part of it. And is that? Hey. Oh, go ahead, bro. I was gonna say that spirit within itself is a reason why to be overtaken with the spirit of fear in that day because they lack the main ingredient to salvation, which is the name. Yeah. But I do, I do got a precept whenever whenever you oh, make a quick point you on that harping on that name man you just look at that movie uh from DC uh Shazam right. you know yeah. right. in order for him to get that power he had to call on that name he had to have that correct name yeah. he couldn't say Jamal talk about uh, you go to second Ezra those that stood stiff before the name that's those that's that it. received the crown yeah. they yeah. come on that's man it. That's, that's it, it. That's that's it. That's right. I do got a precept going into that fear okay. you know what I'm saying the spirit of fear that these Israelites was in around that time. And I'm going to read it. This is what some So that fear is you reluctant to use that name. And a lot of that reluctancy is because they, that they're going to have and that they do have is do they believe in it like that anyway? They don't got no faith. No faith. Mm -hmm. That's right. It says when you lack the confidence to rely on reason, which is our power source, is thinking critically in the times that's coming, relying on the most important thing, the name, yeah. 
it says, you give in to the fears caused by ignorance. Mm. And it makes sense as we're going into this in 1 Samuel 17, the spirit that was on Saul versus the spirit that was on David. Mm. And not even just Saul, but the rest of the Israelites that was under the influence of Saul. <clears throat> you know, new leadership had to come. It just was necessary. New leadership. That's right. On, you know, the, pretty much the, he, this is where he shines. That's yeah. right. That's you know, right. these these other Israelite groups, man, they're cowards. So this is why the Lord's ain't yeah. discussing with him his counsels about war. He's only given to the house of David his counsels of war because that's right, that's they're right. going to have that brave heart and yeah. valiant heart like our forefather David did. Huh? That's right. Man. Hey, when you go into battle, it's, and I always use the sports analogy, you can't take people, you can't put somebody in the game who is of a shaky heart because yeah, they're going to cost you the game. That motherfucker got to be on the bench. Give me this. Can't win with him. Can't do it. So they're not, they, 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 they not going to get no PT in the time to come. People going to realize it's the Lord ain't with these niggas. They gonna realize who the Lord is really with, and, and it's being more evident through that that bullshit that they're saying. Shout yeah, out, yeah, shout out, yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, When uh, that movie Troy, mm -hmm. and that champion came out, they had, they had big neck muscles <laughs> and all that. But yeah, it's, it's not gonna be determined by how much strength you got. Just like with David and Goliath, mm -hmm. it was about you know what the, what the Almighty was doing. It says there is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. An horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waited for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. <laughs> there is again, his holy name. Which is why these groups are laboring so much, you know, with the whole name thing. What's, what's, you know, what's the big deal? Hebrew Israelites are known that, what is that, the God of Abraham, Isaac, That's and right. Jacob. That's right. Right? If we're saying we're Israelites, our God has a name. He identified himself. Yeah. Verse 22, let thy mercy, O Yahweh, be upon us according as we hope in thee. And I mean, that's, that's it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. When you look at this story, man, it, it was basically a miracle that happened, man. Because looking at it cornerly, man, you would you would look how how could David win? It's no, it's no, it's no slight. You know he how, bro. This dude, when we continue reading, it's gonna say, bro, he was a man of war from his youth. Bro, he Saul said he was a man of war from his youth. So he had he he had to have a reputation, bro. Right, right, right. You know? Yeah, oh, man. Um, David was inexperienced in war. Yeah. That shows you the Lord took complete control and he understood that because he had carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army to hurt him. You see, and saying that David hurt him because David had a, a different spirit from everybody mm -hmm. else, man. That's right. You see, it's going to be a different outcome now. These 40 days that Goliath was out there boasting, now David hurt him. Mm -hmm. You know, keep going, bro. Verse 24. And all the men of Israel. When they saw the man fled from him and were so afraid. So you can just imagine this, bro. These men in the war that's amongst the nation of Israel, big dudes, probably been worn, had reputation amongst Israel for being a warrior, man. They running scared, man. Right. You right. see? Keep and going. if I may, that was sin. That they were that that was even sin right there. Yeah. One an unbelieving heart. But there's also if just a quick precept. When you read Deuteronomy 20, there's a law as of going into war. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain mindset that you have. Say something? Yeah, so that's the point I was making. That nigga can't play. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's right. This is Deuteronomy chapter 20. And I'm going to jump to verse 8. And it says, And the officers shall speak further unto the people. And they shall say, What man is there, that, Salakia, What man is there that is fearful and faint hearted? And that's a question. The officer speaking amongst a whole congregation. That's a question that's imposed. And it says, let him go and return to his house. Least his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. Yeah. You know, so everybody was a domino effect back yeah. then. They're scared of Goliath and that, that, that bled into the whole host of Israel. Contagious. So when David came into the scene who was experienced in war and didn't hear anything, it brought on a whole new source of light to that situation. You know, and he kept the law. He, he kept the most high first. Well, the law does say this, you know. That's it on that point. You know? Hey, we can look at them. What's so, up? Whenever you have, uh, you got scared, scared niggas kill morale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that fear, mm -hmm. you start letting that fear creep in. Yeah. What if this? What if that? Just like, what if the white man hold us down and, and put the chip in us? Oh, what are you talking about? Yeah. It's not written. That's right. right. That's right. You know, have you read in this and found out how many, how many in 10 it says, curse be he 
that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully, Man. and cursed be he that keepeth back his soul from blood. Mm -hmm. Now we often use, you know, we use that in the spiritual connotation because we're not literally fighting. But if you was in the in the army or you was in in the military and you fled the battlefield, if you would have turned back, the officers in the back would kill you. Yeah, you that, that one guy that was playing, I forgot what what troop he was playing. He left the battlefield, yeah. and they got their asses whooped. And they and they when the generals came, they was mad. They did that. That's the Persians got beat, defeated. Xerxes was mad. He ordered executions. Yeah. yeah. Niggas' heads was cut off. They had them, you know, those, uh, I forgot what they called them. Yeah. Oh, I remember yeah, that. Some turtles yeah. or whatever yeah. they were called them. It was cutting heads off. Yeah. And it was a, a symbol in the, in the next 300, too. It made them, I don't know if it was walking the plank, or made them go into the water with heavyweights tied on for, for getting defeated in battle. Yeah. So that's some, that's some cowardly shit. Yeah. Spirit can't be on you. That's, that kind of spirit can't be on you. Just... It's, it makes no sense because, like Ben brought out earlier, it's already written that we win. Just walk the path. It's already been told to you that we win already. Yeah. What, yeah. what is all this questioning? What What is this? Yeah, straight up. I'm telling you, straight up. And you, you might, you might die. You know, if you in the battle, there are casualties. We yeah. were talking about on the welfare. Death you don't thing. understand life and death. You know the dynamic of it. Yeah. You're gonna come back, it, as it says, in, right. I think it's in Maccabees. You can't escape the Lord's hand, either in life or death. You gotta go face the Almighty. What did um Eliezer say? Yeah. You know when they tried to get him to eat the eat, mm -hmm. first they said off to the court, yeah. and then he said he wouldn't eat it. And they said, well, look, you can get something that is clean. You can pretend like you ate Just the make pork. Make it look like. Make it look like, and he said no nah, because many uh, persons because of my uh, you know because of my treachery, they're gonna fall and think I went to some strange religion. Yeah, he, so he took his death. So I mean, yeah, hey, you're gonna yeah. die anyway. Yeah, I was trying to conquer death. Yeah, if you take the, yeah. if you take the chip, if you you know if you do what the devil wants you to do, the Lord is going to kill you eventually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so you better off. I mean, that's your life. Yeah. It's the most I got it. As it says in as the Revelation two and ten, uh, fear none of those things. Yeah. Thou shalt suffer. suffer. Mm -hmm. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you might, you know, be faithful unto death. Be faithful unto death. And right here, that's life. That lets and life. This okay. point you made it camp last night of Yashawama that he uh somebody said it. They didn't think Stephen felt it when he got stoned. Right. He said you that. know, how you know that the Lord didn't just snatch his spirit out of his body right before the rocks hit him? You mm -hmm. don't you don't straight know. Up, straight up. You know? We have no idea. Yeah. So oh, death ain't losing for yeah. right. us. Oh, you no. just like if you if you're a martyr in this thing, that's not a loss for us. Right. And and they look at it that way. You can see it. The way they speak, they look at it that way. So yeah, I was shot. I was like, yeah, I was shot. Made that sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> he made that sacrifice. His 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 walk ended with him coming, being resurrected out of the tomb. Yep. We not gonna be uh, greater than our master. So that could be your walk too. <laughs> our walk could end, but our, a part of our walk could be with us going in the ground, yep. or it could be with us <clears throat> being filled with the spirit and being able to. You know what I'm saying? That's right. The what's written is what we got to deal with. What we got to hope for. You see? Yeah. Because it's all in the Bible, you know, says, the Lord said he had respect for his elect. He mm -hmm. said he looked back, he looked back, and he had respect for him. Yeah. So he needed how shot to raise himself with death. So he's gonna raise up his men. It's gonna be the same thing. Same thing. He ain't, go, he ain't gonna forget our labor of love. We can do this all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> before, before you have a shot, actually did go on the cross. He had that, that agony he was in where he prayed. You know, he praying to the Father and it said his, he was in agony and it was as it were drops of blood. And then he said, you know, Father, if it be thy will, you know, he, he was basically saying there's another way, you know, another way. Mm -hmm. And he said, but nevertheless, you know, let your words, you know, let your will be done. Mm -hmm. And he went ahead and he took that death. That, man, that, hey, we have no idea how terrible that beating actually was. It wasn't there, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, even when you watched, uh, I saw years ago, The Passion of the Christ. Mm -hmm. Even then, that dude, I mean, that was, that was a heavy. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it was very gruesome. So, but in person... You you know you know that was a lot worse. Yeah. yeah I got a quick one because you had mentioned Eliezer. This is um Second Maccabees six and verse um twenty six in the uh, GNT. It says for this pr for the prison it would show that I deserve my long life. It would also set a good example on the way young people should be willing and glad to die for our sacred and respected laws. Going into the leadership, man, because in that same chapter you had other dudes over the, uh, amongst the nation of Israel with some whole ass niggas, man, who was trying to get them to go off, you know, because they said they were friends on them. They so they knew Eliezer. 
You know, and that's 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 the example of these dudes today, man. Just horrible leaders that can just don't consent unto the ways of Esau. And like it says in Second Edge 16, you're gonna be had in derision and a reproach, man. And you're gonna be trodden underfoot. You see? But I'm gonna keep going, bro. It says um verse 28, I'm gonna slack it, verse 29. It says in the in slack it, continuing on in verse 28, it says, And as soon as he said these things, he went off to be tortured. And the very people who were who had treated him kindly a few minutes before now turned against him because they thought he had spoke like a madman. Verse 30, when they had beaten him almost to the point of death, he groaned and said, the Lord possesses all holy knowledge. He knows I could have escaped these terrible sufferings and death, yet he also knows that I gladly suffer these things because I fear him. You see? So the elect, you know what I'm saying, is going to have that spirit to... If they do have to take death, they're going to take it, man. And we can look back on these examples like the brother read, you know, when, before we started the lesson about the things that are written the fourth time were written for our learning, man. These are things that, that, that builds up your, your, your courage and your faith, man. You see, we can look back on the scriptures of, of, of examples of our forefathers and what they went through, man. Okay. And that gives us hope, you know. Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel as he come up. And it shall be that the man who which killeth them, the king will. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? Mm -hmm. You see the spirit that was on David, man. You know, and it was so severe that Saul was willing to give give a, a reward. You know what I'm saying? Basically, like treasures. Then also his his daughter, and then also to make that that uh, his house uh, basically tax free, man. You know, mm -hmm. so that shows you how fearful, how how scared they was, man. You know, but keep going, bro. Come, verse twenty seven, and the people, man, are saying. David and said, Why came we start down hither? And with whom? Bring a badass over here, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you supposed to be watching the sheep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And it's spiritual that David was tending to the sheep. It's Peter. Come. Mm -hmm. you know. Verse 29. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? <laughs> and he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spoke, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent him before him. Mm -hmm. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Come. Verse 33. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. And he a man of war from his youth. You see, showing that the Goliath probably had a reputation, man, that they, they knew about, man. You know, he's this big, bad giant. And likewise, he saw, you know, these 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 other counselors saying the same thing, man. How 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 you how are we going to be able to defeat Esau without using guns, without getting along? This, we need to go going up another way, trying to go another way, man. You see? We need to tap into Esau blessing. Yeah, you know? <laughs> That's right. Cool. Faithless. Yeah, faithless, yeah. Hey. Verse 34, and David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, mm -hmm. and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. Man, so like the elder said earlier, now David is going into his past experience that he went through where the Lord basically saved him out of these things. So David already had, already knew he and had confidence in the Lord, man. You see? Keep going, bro. Gone. Verse 35, and I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose again against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and mm -hmm. slew him. Keep Thy on. servant slew both the lion and the bed. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. Ooh, so you can just imagine you a king and you see this young, this young man coming up just with that boldness and confidence, man. You got these big dudes in the army just shook. And here this young man come up, this youngster, man, you know. Bold like that, man. Yeah. You know, straight on. Verse 37. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion. You see, David, he was bold in the Lord, man. Mm -hmm. You see? He gave the Lord the glory, man. Keep going, bro. Gun. The Lord that liveth, Salakia, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Mm -hmm. And Saul said unto David, Go. And the Lord be with you. You see, in the times that we're coming into, we're going through situations right now. Every brother is going through situations right now in their life where the Lord is, 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 is bringing us through. To the point when we get into this time, we're going to be able to boast and have that confidence in the Lord like David did. Mm -hmm. You see? 
Because that's what it's going to take, man. If you don't have that confidence and, 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 and boldness in the Lord, man, you're going to fold to Esau, man. Yep. Keep going, bro. Come. Verse 38. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Mm -hmm. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go. Yeah, so this armor, he, he Saul gave him his armor off him, man. Mm -hmm. And you know the king is going to have the best, he's going to have the best of the best, man. He ain't going to just be out there with what the regular soldiers got. He's going to have some, 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 some top-notch stuff, man. You see? Keep going, bro. Uh, it says uh, And peep what David said man. Verse 39 And David girded his own sword upon his armor And he essayed to go For he had not proved it mm -hmm. And David said unto Saul I cannot go with these For I have not proved them mm -hmm. And David put them off him he Yeah so David He didn't use them Yeah he didn't use it man Like boxing gloves you ain't familiar with like, mm -hmm. I got my own but I don't want to use them with these boxing gloves Mm-hmm. Because David already had armor on, man. He had the armor of the Most High on. Yeah, Ephesians man. 6, man. That's right. You see? That's why that corner armor didn't feel right to him, man. You know? He's like, man, you know, he probably was big on him, too, and all that, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know? So he was like, nah, he, he you know, it, it felt unfamiliar to him, like you said, bro. You know? And, and then no, no, notice, they, notice the, 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 the transition, though. He was like... David was so convincing in the spirit that Saul was like, "Well, you use my stuff." Yeah, yeah, straight like, up. He just had, he just had it over. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. Girl, yeah. he's only the king of Israel. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, he was like, he was like, dude, you just, he, he went through his look, and then at the end, he, shit, hey, you got it, homie. Yeah. <laughs> Hand it over the kingdom, just like that. Yeah, straight up, <laughs> that's that's it. just like that, just like that, with, with, with lack of faith. Yep. Yeah, you see, that's 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 a great point because we had just read in, in uh, the thirteenth chapter that the most I was going to take the king away from him. Yeah, mm -hmm. he didn't even recognize that this young cat here. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was him handing it right over. Man, handing it right over, right over. in straight front up. of everybody. In front of everybody, that's his <laughs> <It's all. laughs> As a leader, he's like, "Here, bro, a leader. Mm. Here, sure. You think you got it?" Yeah, he was sure. Girl, you got it. I can't do this no more. Man. You got it. This is back in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40. And he took a staff in his hand and chose him five, five smooth stones out of the brook mm -hmm. and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. I got a quick question. So one of the younger brothers, what, is that, what, is basic, what does that stone represent? Yeah, was yeah, was exactly. Mm -hmm. You see? And when you look at the scriptures, uh, you know, they just don't put things in there for no reason because it mentioned five stones, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? It could have, the scripture could have just said he picked up stones, right. you know? But, you know, symbolically, like you said, that rock is Yahweh Shah. And it's just funny he said five stones because Yahweh Shah, uh name has five Hebrew characters. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Shah I. You know what I'm saying? It's just you know, something I was just thinking of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and five yeah. represents power too. Yep. It's a yeah. fist. Mm hmm. Yep, that's right. Quick precept for this, this second chronicles twenty and fifteen, and he said, "Hearken ye all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the king of Jehoshaphat. Thus said the Lord unto you: Be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's." That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Because David had that experience already, so you yeah. know the battle is not ours; it's the most ours anyway. Yeah. So whatever the Lord say, go, go. You know. That's right. That's right. Man. Have that chapter. one real quick. This is 2 Maccabees 15 and 21. And Maccabeus, seeing the coming of the multitude and the diverse preparations of armor and the fierceness of beasts, stretched out his hands towards heaven and called on the Lord that worketh wonders, knowing that victory cometh not by arms, but even as it seemeth good to him, he giveth it to such as are worthy. To the humble, to the meek. It's not by carnal means, you know. This is back in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 41. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I just read verse 40. Verse 41. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about, he saw David. He disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Yeah, so basically he was insulted. Like, man, you gonna send this little dude out here to fight me? You know, y'all ain't heard about me? You know, 
Yeah. So I'm yeah. talking about that reputation. You know? He been out there yeah. for a month talking <laughs> shit. He ain't talking hella cash. Yeah, you know? Yeah, and these, uh, these even mice love when they when the word ready comes up right here. They gonna say King David was red. Yeah, mm-hmm. that doesn't even fit the story. Nope. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, we just send this little red. Oh man. God, God, that's right. Yeah. Anybody, any brothers that knew it, newly came in, know what that word ready actually means right there? Why it's placed? Ready. Like no blemishes. Huh? No, like no blemishes, like on skin. Not, not quite. Like to a degree, red. but no. Brownish red. Mm-mm, no, he was just a, he was a young man. He was a youth. You know, that's what it means when it says it right there. He was a youth when it means in the context. It calls so you, said you, right? you mean like uh, yeah. without a beard or with a beard? Just a young man. Just a young man. Yeah, just a young man. He could have had a beard. Like he was, you know, like he was just on point. Mm-hmm. Ruddy, you know, like handsome, you know, vigorous, you know, mm-hmm. still young in his youth. Yep, you know? yep. They call Esther Ruddy. In the book of, uh, you know. Come. He said, "Ruddy through her perfection of her beauty." So, <laughs> give that to her. Come. This is back in First Samuel chapter seventeen, verse forty-three. And the Philistine said unto David, "Am I a dog, and thou comest to me with staves?" And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Yeah, day in the name of Dagon. Mm-hmm. You know, talking mad cash, man. He yeah. was he was insulted that they yeah. sent David out there. Yeah. You know. God, David's skin and bones and stays, stays and sticks. Yeah, stick, yeah. yeah, man, what, yeah you mm. go, what am I, dog? You gonna give me a stick? Oh, shit, mm. you talking shit. <laughs> ooh, ooh, y'all wanna play, go play fetch with this, this cat mm. right here? Dang. This pretty boy? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> What's that gonna do to make me mad? What's that gonna do to make me mad? Nice. Straight up, straight up. If I can read this uh, good news translation on, on that. Uh, 1 Samuel 17, 42. And when he got a good look at David, he was filled with scorn for him because he was just a nice, good-looking boy. He was a hater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see this hot here? This is... You got some? Kind of just, it was just real quick. It's uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Mm. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, just like David, mm-hmm. in purity. That's right. That's a beautiful scripture. Yeah. Because what that, that was Paul speaking unto Timothy, and basically he was giving them advice on uh, being an elder. Mm-hmm. You know, and just like, which is similar to what you see going on here with David. You know, because after this, after this, uh, this battle here, man. You know, David got a lot of responsibility. Yep. Yeah. You know. Sorry. This is back in First Samuel chapter seventeen, verse forty-four. And the Philistine oh. said to David, "Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field." Mm. Then said David to the Philistine, "Thou comest to me with the sword, and with the spear, and with the shield." But I come to thee in the name of Yahweh of hosts, the God of our armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Can somebody get Psalms 44? I forgot what uh, what verse. I think it's like 4 or something like that. You know? uh, Read that one more time, bro. Come. 1 Samuel 17 and 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and a shield, but I come to thee in the name of Yahweh of hosts. Man, showing you, bro. David had that... He had that confidence, full confidence. His confidence in the Lord was on max, bro. Yeah, that's right. He totally trusted in the Lord, man. That's you right. see? Mm-hmm. To go into this battle, man, with, with no carnal armor. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To then to the world, like, to the carnal eyes, like, bro, what the hell? Mm-hmm. You know? She, right. We can go on, bro. So. Oh, you got that song? I got that song, 44? I got you. Go ahead, bro. Read that. It's uh, Psalms 44 and 4. Thou art my king, O your help. Command deliverances, deliverances for Jacob. Verse 8 is the point. Yeah, okay, yeah, verse 8. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, kind of. Just read it all the way through. Oh, uh, you can just jump down to verse 8, bro. Time's sake. Psalms 44 and 8. In the Most High, we boast all the day long. Mm-hmm. You see, David. David was boasting in the Lord. You got something? Six. You got something? Can he start at 6? Yeah, let's start at 6, bro. Kind of. Psalms 44 and 6. Oh. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. Man, that's why he took it out, man. Mm-hmm. Took those things out, man. <laughs> Like David understood that it, like like brothers pull precepts out, man. It's not 
the sword that saves, man. You know, <clears throat> uh, I think one of the brothers pulled that about the, the multitude. A king is not saved by the multitude, man. Yeah, you right. see, you know. Yeah. Yep. So it's all about the spirit of the Lord. The battle is the Lord's, which the brother going to read further down in Samuels. Keep going, bro. Verse 7. But thou hast saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hated us. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. In the Most High we boast all the day long and praise thy name forever. Say a lot. Man, boasting in the Lord all day. He, what did he do? He was boasting in the Lord to Saul. You know, a lion came up against me, a bear. The Lord saved me out of it. The Lord delivered, delivered me out of it, man. Gave me the power. I, gave, I grabbed it by the beard and smote it. You see? And it was, he gave that glory unto the Lord. He didn't say, I did this. Yeah. This is what I did. Nah, no, he gave it to the Lord, man. That's right. Keep going, bro. Oh, okay. it's just, I think the woman is going to say, like, through the name. Through, it, through the name. I got you. Uh, <clears throat> verse 9, but thou hast cast off and put us to shame and goest not forth with our armies. Thou makest us to turn back from the enemy. Psalms 44 and 5. Jump up to 5. So like that was the point I want. Con. Psalms 44 and 5. Through thee will we push down our enemies. Mm -hmm. Through through thy name will we tread them under thy back. Rise up against us. Man, showing you how important that name is, man. That's, that's right. the source that's of that right. power. That's right. And that's what David said. You come to me with spear, with sword and spear, and I come at you in the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, man. Yeah. And the electors gonna come into that. They gonna have that same spirit, man. You know, we don't need we don't need no guns. We don't need no damn hospitals, man. All we need is your how about shimmy how was shot, man. Right. I, I got a precept if I can. It's uh Psalms one twenty four and eight. It says our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's right. All right. So there's a, there's there's main ingredients the name and having that confidence that David had. If I can bring out one more, it's uh Second Chronicles thirty two when Hezekiah was speaking to uh. The, the army when he was going against Assyria, Second Chronicles thirty-two and eight, and I'm reading it in LT. It says he may have a great army, but they are merely men. We have the Lord our power to help us and to fight our battles for us. Hezekiah, because of Saul, was lifted off of them mm -hmm. when David came in his spirit and defeated Goliath. That's right. Yeah, man, changed morale completely. Yeah, he was a uh, he was a descendant of David after all, anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah, mm. Hezekiah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is back in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 46. It says, This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host slocket, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Man, boasting hard in the Lord, man. Mm -hmm. Confidence, man. You know? And you see, man, you, you imagine that, man. This little dude, man, telling this giant that, man. You imagine how you like, what? You know? Keep going, bro. God and David also prophesied him. Yeah, he, he did. He spoke yeah. and boasted in the name of the Lord. And right afterward, he said exactly how it was going to take place, you know, to tit for tat to the T. Man. You know, and that just, when you look at it, when you look at it in the grand scheme of things, the same thing applies to his house. We're out here telling Esau how they're going to fall, what's going to take place, and now we're seeing it. Come to pass, mm -hmm. you know, and this is all in the name through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Yeah. You know, it says in the book that uh, Acts that David was a prophet. Mm -hmm. Yep, you got it, bro. This is back in First Samuel chapter seventeen, verse forty-seven. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give it to Salakit, and He will give you into our hands. Mm -hmm. So this battle right here is the Lord's, man. And like the brother said earlier, man, it's already written, bro. The elect already got the victory, man. You know, so it's just it's gonna play out in the physical. You see, he saw it already defeated, man. This place is already destroyed, man. Yeah, you see? Come on, bro. Verse 45. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose, he came and drew nigh to meet David. That David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Going back into that movie, uh Troy. When the Achilles came on the scene, what did they do? They they came toward each other, man. You know? When he, Achilles came out, you know, the other army, the dude, big dude, like, yeah, got the army, got the army, his army hype, man. Mm -hmm. You just banging on the shield, boom, boom, boom. That, that's their champion, man. Yeah. You see? Keep going, bro. Mm -hmm. Verse 49. And David put his hand in his bag and took them to stone and slain it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. Mm -hmm. That the stone sunk into his forehead <clears throat> and he fell upon his face to the earth. Man, that one hit a quitter, man. You know, <laughs> fell straight down on his face, man. Just like you, I think you're reading that account 
in Samuel's two how the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant, the Covenant man, and they set it in the uh, I guess with, with Dagon, mm -hmm. and they came back and found Dagon uh, flat on his face, man. Mm -hmm. You see, and now this damn Philistine who boasted in his God, which is Dagon, is flat on his face, man. You see, mm -hmm. and that's how we're gonna overcome in this time through that rock, man, through Yahweh Shah, man. You see, the elect got the victory through Yahweh Shah, man. You see. Hey, you find it interesting when you read about that account too, and you look at, especially, uh, it's in Jeremiah going into when he sent Sariah out there to the captives to read that letter. And it goes into how he took that letter and then threw it in that, in that water, and then it sunk in saying Babylon is falling. You know, I just found it interesting. It was worded very similar to how David threw that stone and it sunk into the giant. That you know what I'm saying? Stone. That great millstone. That's right. I got one real quick. Mm -hmm. Psalms 98 and 1. O oh, sing unto Yahweh a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him to victory. Mm -hmm. First round knockout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yahweh shot, it ain't gonna be no fight. Like, yeah. It's gonna be a first round mm -hmm. knockout. Easy work. <laughs> Easy work. Easy work. That was pretty much it on that, bro. Okay. I mean, you want to finish it up? It's up to you. you oh. It's up to you, brother. You know, you teach him. Okay, yeah, finish it up, bro. Where you at, uh, 51? This is, uh, yeah, verse 50. Yeah, okay, yeah, read down to 51, bro. Okay. This is First Samuel chapter 17, <coughs> verse 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with the sling and with the stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. For there was no sword in the hand of David. Mm -hmm. Clearly, he clearly said there wasn't going to be no sword. Yep. You know? yeah. So no you got gun. Yeah. no gun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got Israelites that are in that spirit will say, yeah. well, he had a sling to you. That's, we can, they use right. that as justification yep. to have a gun. When it's clearly saying David didn't use the ordinary method of war to defeat him. Yeah. Right. He yeah. did something he was used to. We're used to the spirit. Man. The rock is Yahweh Shai. Mm. That's right. That's right. We trust in our rock, which is Yahweh Shai. That's, mm -hmm. That's, That's right. That's it. Uh, you got something? Yeah, I got a quick precept. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 47 and verse 1. It says, And after him rose up Nathan to prophesy in the time of David, as is the fat is taken away from the peace offering, so was David chosen out of the church of Israel. He played with lions as with kids and with bears as with lambs. Mm -hmm. Slew he not a giant when he was yet but young? And did he not take away the reproach from the people when he lifted up his hand with the stone and the sling and beat down the boasting of Goliath? For he called upon the Most High Lord, and he gave him strength in his right hand to slay that mighty warrior and set up the horn of his people. So the people honored him with ten thousands and blessed him in the blessings of the Lord, in that he gave a crown, like it, and in that he gave him a crown of glory, for he destroyed the enemies on every side and brought them out the Philistines, his adversaries, and break their horn and sunder until this day. Now, um, the main point there being, he called upon the, the Most High Lord, and he gave him strength in his right hand to slay the mighty warrior. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to the name of the Lord again. Come on. Yeah. That's right. Verse 51. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Man, imagine that playing out, bro. Man. Woo, this big dude, bro, and this look. <laughs> then he stand on top of him with his own sword and just cut his head off. Man. Yeah, they, they were champion. Man. Just got beheaded by a, <laughs> a, a youngster, man. Uh, now, now, like you said, bro, one even... You know what I'm saying? In in you know what I'm saying, war like that before, man. You know? Likewise with us, this gon it's gon you know, this place is gonna be taken down by dudes who are who are maintenance man, who are uh, 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 what do they call it? You know what I'm saying? Just regular, you know, delivery drivers, man. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah the, the elder had read it earlier how the Lord chose the things that are uh, based, the things that are weak to confound the strong, man. You see? Your average day uh, you know, fast food worker, man. You know, this is regular Joe Blow, man of the Lord, man. Gonna be gonna take down this mighty giant, man. This man who has control of the whole planet Earth right now, man. Who boasts in his weaponry, man. Got the top military, man. It's gonna get taken down through us, man. Lord willing, we are those men. You see? Come, on, come. On. I got this, bro. Alright, this is uh, Matthew 17, verse 20. And it says, And Yahweh said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, 
if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And I believe. You know, um, what's that? Luke 18 says if you believe uh, things with man is, rather paraphrasing, it's, it's impossible, you know, with man to, you know, but things do, your house shy. You know, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, it's possible. Right. And David had that faith, and he was basically build, that ba faith was building up when he fought the bear. You know, he slayed the bear, he slayed the lion. You know what I'm saying? It got he got built up to that point. Now when we look at the times we're in now, we're gonna get built up to that point as well. We're getting built up as we speak, you know. And we have what our, our apostles, our elders, you know what I'm saying, is basically are getting built up and building us up, you know, right after that. So this is something that we have to look at and this is like a faith boost when we read this uh you know, read this account here with David. Sure. But having done this? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, it was just the part of uh, when it spoke when it spoke about that stone, you know, smiting uh, smiting Goliath. Uh, it was something to his skull. It made me think about uh, this scripture here in Habakkuk, the third chapter, in the thirteenth verse. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. Thou anoint Salakia. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. By discovering the foundation unto the net, and who's that head? Esau, Edom, That's particularly right. these these Amalekites. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that rock is gonna come back and smite the head once again. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I think I want to go with you just said real quick. The Jeremiah fifty one sixty four, and thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I bring on her, and they shall be weary. Thus far, the words of Jeremiah. The stone sunk into his head. So Babylon was sink. The stone is your outside. So, yeah. yeah. I got a precept. <coughs> this is Psalms 144 and 1. Blessed be Yahweh, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Brought up the example going into the brothers with different professions. A lot of us haven't had none of this experience in, in preparation of what's getting ready to come. But the Lord is our teacher. And then when that Holy Spirit hit, it's going to hit you. You're going to know exactly what to do. Right. Just as we'll know exactly what to say when we're presented in front of different magistrates and such. The Lord is in complete control. You know, mm -hmm. the Lord is with us. That was it? Mm -hmm. Man, so hopefully this lesson was edifying. All right, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahashai, Ba'ashem, Rekakadash. Double honors unto the apostles, the great millstone, the teacher, rule well, peace and blessings unto the elect.